This is Ben from Orange Goblin. You're watching Underkill TV. Welcome to Underkill TV. Still at Hard Rock Hell, joined with a band that needs no introduction whatsoever, Orange Goblin. <laughs> How are you doing, guys? It's good to see you. Thanks. Very well. Yeah, we've only just got here. First beer of the day. So uh, the only way is up. Uh, <laughs> are you looking forward to playing? Yeah, I am. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's always good here. It's always yeah. just a party atmosphere and relaxing. And we've got yeah. some new material to air, so it's quite an exciting time to do it. And one thing I was going to say from uh, about the festival is, do you feel this is something that's going to be, take off around the UK? Like, I mean, I know they're doing the Hammer Fest year and everything like that, but from a, a punter's point of view, would you agree that it's great for them that you've got your own sort of chalet as opposed to camping in a tent? Do you think this is something there's a way forward for festivals? Well, opening all the other punters. I think. I think it's. It's, it's, it's good. It's, it's, I mean. It happens quite a lot. There's a few places around the country do this sort of thing. There's yeah. one on the south coast. Do the one on Minehead. Minehead does it as well. And it, it's a great, it's a great idea. But it beats going and camping in the fields. But what you'll find is that places like this, they need the bookings in the winter. So all these festivals in holiday camps are generally when it's minus 30 and you're freezing your clackers off. So it's 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 cool. But it does give it does give them free reign to put yeah. festivals on. Out of the summer season, yeah. where it's just, it's just a glut. We get invited to do the one at Hedonism in the Barbados or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> I've been the rocks. Yeah. I've always yeah. yeah. go to the nudist one. No one wants to see my tackle now. So, how long have you guys got tonight? An hour. Uh, an hour. And as you said, you're playing some new songs. Um, when can we expect a new album then? February 13th. Yeah, February 13th. And have we got a title yet? You and Jesus the Damned. And how would that compare to other sort of Orange Goblin offerings? It's just a natural progression, what we do. It's a little bit, I mean, no disrespect to previous producers, but I think it's the best production we've ever had. It's, um, we've had a lot more time to do it, that's why. Yeah, yeah we, did, we recorded a different, totally different process this time. We did it over a series of weekends rather than just two weeks solid. And it gave us time to stop and think about things. Between so, I, mean, I said, the way it's normally works, we've had a two week time slot. We've gone in, we've done everything in two weeks, we're setting up, recording, mixing, max, absolutely everything in two weeks, and that's it. But this time, it was the same number of days, but because we were working, couldn't take time off work as residential studios with nothing to do with yeah, yeah. So, so this so, time, we like got driving to the studio, and no one could get hammered. And so we, yeah. we, we just, just did it at weekends, so essentially it was like nine weeks it took. Yeah. And the, the guy that um, sort of engineered and produced and all that sort of stuff, was, um, he had time to take it home in between sessions, work on stuff, come back, let us know what it was like, we'd give him suggestions, he'd go back work on it more, so he spent a lot, lot more time getting the sound this time. Mm. So Yeah, and he was good, he's a, he's a young kid. And, uh, he's not younger than we are. So he's, well, he's, he's 26, but he looks a lot younger, doesn't he? But uh, yeah, he's, he's a lot younger than we are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that much, oh yeah, I am a lot yeah, younger yeah. now, and I keep forgetting I'm not 26 anymore. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think it was a new project for him. He's never done an album yeah. before, and he really put his heart and soul into it. And did yeah. a great job. So, yeah, it was uh, Jamie. What's his Jamie. 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 Surname. Nine, nine weekends of him. He can't remember his name. <laughs> Jamie Dodd. <laughs> Jamie Dodd. <laughs> Look out for him. He's yeah. Going to be a big name. And like you said, you you guys obviously then felt you were better writing for taking your time on this album, having a lot more time. It's, it's you. I'm much happier with the finished product. Yeah, then. you can take it home. Yeah. You're not constantly waking up. Previously, we've been living in the studio. More, yeah. So you just wake up to, the, <laughs> to your songs, you, you go to sleep, and you've got the drums playing. You had a break, and you could listen to it. It, it, gives, on your... it gives you time to try ideas out as well, especially for like Joe and Ben, yeah. and that, which is basically, you know, we've written the songs beforehand. You go and you're playing first time through, and then you think, well, maybe that bit didn't kind of, or maybe we could do something different, or maybe Ben would. Yeah. Great for me because I go in on a Saturday. Do two songs one weekend, and then get all week resting my throat, going back yeah. fresh. And so you know, in the past we've had to sort of had three days. Say right, all the vocals have to yeah. be done in that time. And you can strain your voice and do them, not get the best results. And like Chris said, gave us a chance to experiment with a few yeah. things as well. I mean, there's a couple of songs where I actually even do a little bit of singing <laughs> <laughs> instead of just shouting in tune, well, vaguely in tune. Excellent stuff. Uh, and how, also, how do you go about with a band with your reputation? How do you go about picking a set list? Because you've got a, a really good back catalogue. Oh, for something like this now, where you've only got like an hour. I sat down and counted the other day, and it was something ridiculous, like 79 songs or eight, 81 songs or so we've written in our career. 
Really? Thank you so much. Nice. just now. Hey, I've interviewed you just done, and I said, we waffled for about two or three minutes, and basically said, you know what? Ben just sends me an email a couple of weeks before, that's what we were playing, yeah. and that's what we were playing. So, yeah, you know, well, I mean, I can't be honest, we've been, I, I definitely have been a little bit lazy over the years, but we haven't had a lot of time to get together, so we have. We found a set over the years that's really worked, and we've yeah. stuck by it. But I'd like to, you know, when the album's released, mix it up a There's bit. Always so next, what I'm hoping we can do is like a tour where we do a five-hour set of every song we've ever written. <laughs> yeah. well, I was going to mention Goblin Fest or something. <laughs> I, think, I think there's those songs that people always want to hear, and you kind of have yeah. to do it, even yeah. though you've played it 101,000. You, you go and see Sabbath, they're going to play Paranoid. Of course, it's the same with you guys. Yeah, yeah, so there's, there's still songs we're going to have to play, yeah. Yeah. even though we might be sick to the back teeth of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we still have to do it, um, and we do we do try and swap songs around. Yeah, and especially now we've got new material coming in. A lot of the older materials. That's quite be. exciting because we haven't had any new, mate- yeah. new material for yeah. like five Not or six years. So. For the fans. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, I think that was one of the reasons we sort of kicked on getting the album done this year because we thought like, we can't we keep cannot. milking this. Yeah. set this. We've yeah. got a really cult fan no base. You know, yeah. the fans are really sort of yeah. loyal. Yeah. To well, you know, they have been loyal, and we owe it. We definitely owe to everybody that's come to they're, see they're us. They're loyal, and even though there might not be like a, a massive amount of Orange Goblin fans in the world, the yeah, ones that are out there are all absolutely hardcore, massive Orange Goblin fans, and would probably like kill their mothers for us. <laughs> in fact, a few of them have. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? They're really. Yeah. It's almost like we could have started like a Turbo Negro, Turbo Jürgen thing and get <laughs> Goblin yeah. like, fan club of things. I think that is, that, that's what I think we've done really well. It's like Goblin Bellin on the bottom. <laughs> 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 the great big cock. <laughs> 2012 as well, guys. What's your plans? Are you going to be going out on tour around the UK and perhaps yeah, around yeah, Europe? Right. UK and Ireland tour on April the 8th. April the 8th. Yeah. And there's a, there's a date in... Berlin halfway through it sort of thing which is <laughs> quite weird but um, yeah and then there's all the summer festivals hopefully mm-hmm. there's already Bloodstock of um, Hellfest yeah, yeah. Um, we're looking at getting on download as many sort of home, home festivals as we can and then whatever comes our way in Europe as well Another thing I was going to ask you guys um, when I was out in America I was out in LA uh, I think it was about two years ago um, there's a massive record shop out there, uh, and I was quite surprised how, how much of a big following you have got in America. Um, is there any plans, perhaps, to get over there? Maybe oh, two thousand. We were surprised as well this summer, year. So we were yeah. there in May and June. Yeah, we had a massive said. response out yeah. there. A load of people. Took I think it because it was five years since we'd been there, That's right, yeah. and it really sort of took us all by surprise. How much different was this time from last time? So so was, you're always a bit unsure if you're going to get riders. We got. You know, decent crowds turning up. And things. People was, actually paid us to play. It was great. Yeah. So we sold out merch three times, I think. Wow. Well, had to keep getting stuff reprinted and sent out. It was a phenomenal response. Yeah. Uh, it'd be nice if we could sort of keep that momentum yes. going and get back. Yeah. Not, not being the one with, like, now we have got new material coming out. It's going to be the records coming out over there at yeah. the same time. So, you know, Brilliant. get the ball rolling, really. Excellent stuff. Uh, and one last question I was going to ask you about, uh, I think I've seen you guys about 11 times, 11, 12 times. Uh, some of the bands... Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think um, some of the, either, whether it be at festivals uh, or, you know, support shows or headline shows, what's been the best band you've toured with? I mean, one of my favourite gigs I think I saw you guys with was with uh, Dio and Alice Cooper, because that was a great bill, you know, it was... What, about, what were you a personal... Do you mean best as in, as, uh, technically... Or just best as in just a friendship. Tour, tour friend. Yeah, right. yeah, so yeah. I mean, we've been lucky that everyone we've talked with, we've got really yeah. well. Yeah. You know, just every, every name I can think of, like yeah. Solace, Roadsaw, Witchcraft, Grand Magus, Cathedral, we always have the best time on the road and yeah. scissor fire and everything. It's just, yeah. you know, it's, we I'm always seem to end up. Yeah. 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 We, I think it's us, we bring people down to our base <laughs> level of like. Yeah. Well, they, 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 yeah, we, we come back from the tour thinking, oh, they're really cool people. They, they leave the tour with broken go. people. They go, they go home thinking, what's happened to my brain? <laughs> we can. <laughs> and all they say, oh, they're stupider than us. <laughs> the Solace would be my favourite. I like yeah. Ben said, I like Solace. Solace, just we kind of clicked a little bit. Solace and Grand Magus and Road Sword. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, the three, uh, three of them probably sticking. Well, guys, uh, once again, thank you very much for your time here, and we really do look forward to seeing you tonight. Uh, we hope you, to see you then and perhaps catch up with you in 2012 when the album's out. And uh, we look forward to that. Well, once again, thanks very much for the guys from Orange Goblin, and this has been Underkill TV. Cheers. Thanks, guys. It's brilliant.
I'm Martin from Orange Goblin and you're watching Underkill TV. It's Chris from Orange Goblin, you're watching Underkill TV. It's Joe from Orange Goblin and you're watching Casualty. <laughs> uh, under, under kill, under kill UT. Under kill TV.